I am AKS, uh, and uh, uh, first of all, I should say I am addressing the students of uh, uh, BCom uh, second semester, both honors and general. So, I have not been able to meet you to for a long time, as you know that we are going through a very unusual and tough situation, and staying at home is most important. But still, ultimately. Uh, the trouble we are going through will come to an end and you will have to appear for exam. So I have decided that to speak something on the topics uh, that which are included in your syllabus. So today I will be talking on business communication and I have not been able to start discussion on this topic before. So let us start with before going to the business communication, you should first of all know what is communication. So communication uh, in a brief sense, I should say that communication is broadly what one person does to create understanding in the minds of another or that another may be an individual or a group. So Louis A. Allen has given a beautiful definition of communi communication. So let me quote Alain, quote, communication is the sum total of all the things that a person does when he wants to create an understanding in the mind of another. It involves a systematic and continuous process of telling, listening and understanding. So if you go through this definition, you will find that the basic purpose of communication is to create understanding in the minds of other or others. That means that one person, when one person decides to communicate something, so he has a purpose, he or she has a purpose in mind. That means to create understanding in the minds of another person. So let us try to identify some of the basic elements in the process of communication. Because in the definition itself, you find that communication is a systematic and continuous process. If we define it as a process, naturally there are certain basic elements uh, of this particular process. So let me identify the basic elements of the communication process. First of all, there must be a sender in every communication. Sender means the person who initiates the communication process. For example... I am giving this lecture to you on business communication. So I want to communicate something uh, to you regarding the topic business communication. And because I have initiated the communication here, that means giving lecture to you. So I am the sender in this particular example. When I go to the cl your classroom and give lectures and discuss something, so I am the sender because I start the communication process. So there must be a sender in every communication. For example, the manager gives some instructions to his or her workers. So naturally, the manager is the sender because manager gives instructions means manager initiates the communication. So there must be a sender in every communication. And next comes the message. There must be a message in every communication. Because if there is no message in communication, the communication is completely meaningless. What is the message? So, the message of communication may take different forms. It may be a particular fact. It may be an idea. It may be a particular opinion. Or it may be some information. So, it varies from uh, per uh, person to person. And it also depends on the situation. For example, when a friend is talking to his or her friend, so naturally that is a personal communication, but some emotions, some entertainment is shared between them. But in business, when the manager communicates to the worker, so manager has something important to communicate to the worker, either some instruction to do some work, so this instruction is the message. Or, for example, when a company uh, 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 releases some advertisement, either in the print media or in the electronic media. So naturally, the basic purpose is to sell the product. So basic information about the product is given 
in that communication so this information given in the about the product is the idea so idea may take different forms so it depends uh, on the situation in which the two persons are communicating in personal communication the idea may take one shape but in business communication the idea may ke, take a completely different shape in the in marketing you know that uh, you know better than me if you go uh, switch on your tv you will find that lot of advertisements are coming for different products so the basic information of the about the product its prices its quality its weight everything is given so all this information together constitute the idea of communication or the message of communication next comes encoding what is encoding encoding is a particular process through which the idea of communication is converted into certain symbols such as words pictures signs etc or it may be also a combination of them for example if you see some cadbury product you will find that uh, the, there is a particular logo used for cadbury on the cadbury pack so naturally that logo itself signifies that it is a cadbury product so naturally the the, the when cadbury is sold in the market so the, the the everything about the product is something is written on on the cadbury pack and some logo is used so it is a combination of both word and sign so naturally when if anyone wants to communicate something one must take the help of certain signs symbols pictures etc for example i am giving a lecture to you so naturally when i am giving this lecture i am using certain english words so here words are are my ideas are transmitted to you through some words so uh, my ideas are converted through the process of encoding into certain symbols in this particular example the words i am uttering are the uh, 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 the words i am uttering is, is the, pro the process encoding process to express my idea so basically encoding is a process through which any idea of communication in converted into certain symbols and i have told that maybe symbols may take different forms such as words picture signs or communicate or a combination of them then comes the channel or media of communication so every communication must go through certain media or channel for example the the government wants to communicate something to the citizens so naturally either the government gives some advertisement in the newspapers or on tv some government communication comes so naturally there is so i so the this new, when something is at some advertisement is given in the newspapers so newspaper is the media through which the, uh, the communication takes place when on tv some government announcements or are, are made so naturally the tv itself is the communication for example i am communicating to you so i am recording something so naturally i am using a particular device the mobile uh, in which i am recording so my ideas are expressed in certain words uh, that means the encoding and this encoded message of communication i am transmitting through some media through the i am recording in some uh, on mobile and ultimately it will, it will be uploaded so naturally these devices it may be the, the media can take different shapes it may be the computer uh, the Te te television set the mobile phone all these are newspapers these are the media channel of communication because ideas are transmitted through certain media or channel so without channel the the message of communication cannot go from uh, one place to another next come the receiver who is the receiver so as i made it clear initially that there must be sender of communication in this particular example because i am giving the lecture so naturally i am the sender in this example now who are the receiver so my lecture is addressed to the become uh, second year honors and general students so the all the students are of become second year general second year general and honors uh, they are supposed to be my receivers the, so naturally my communication is addressed to them it may be the case that all of you may not 
go through this lecture because you don't have the technical facility of go, uh, listening to my lecture. But those who will listen to my lecture, naturally they will be receiver of my communication. That means communication must be addressed to someone. For example, when I give a lecture in my classroom, so I, I address to all the students of become second year. So all the students of become second year who are sitting in front of me in normal lectures, so they are the receivers of my communication because there must be a receiver for every communication. If there is no receiver, the, there is no question of communication. For example, I come to a classroom, the classroom is empty, the facing the wall, I am talking, uh, I am talking. So after some days, so people will think that I have gone mad and uh, advise me to go to a psychiatrist because there is no receiver. So if I talk to myself, that is not communication, that is a monologue. That, that means I am talking to myself, my communication is not addressed to someone else. So always a communication must be ad addressed to someone. So receiver is the person to whom the communication is addressed. The receiver, may, when a friend is talking to another friend, it is a one-to-one -one communication. There is one sender and one receiver. But now I am delivering this lecture to all become students of second year. So here the sender is a single person, a case. But the receiver means the all the group of students of become second year honors and general to whom my lecture is addressed. Next comes decoding. So decoding is the process through which the receiver the interprets the encoded message of communication. So what is encoding? I have already made, in, made it clear that the communication takes place with the help or our ideas are converted into certain symbols for communication. That means in my case symbols are nothing but a, some English words. So, so but the receiver to whom the communication is addressed, they must, inter, must be able to interpret my message correctly. For example, if there is anyone among you who does not know the alphabet of English or who is not acquainted with the English language. So my communication will be a total failure simply because of the fact that, that the receiver will fail that receiver, that means the person who does not know English, will fail to daily uh, decode my uh, 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 communication because he does not know English, because my lecture is addressed in English. So, for successful communication, the, uh, the encoded the symbols which are used in the process of encoding, that, that must be understood by the receiver. So, the process through which the receiver interprets the encoded message sent by the sender is known as decoding. That means decoding through the process of decoding the receiver understands the message of communication sent by the uh, uh, sender. Then but last but not the least is called feedback. That means that effectiveness of communication cannot be judged without get, getting response from the receiver or receivers. And be, for example, I am delivering this lecture. So naturally, now it is not possible if it is a general classroom lecture. So after the lecture, if I ask questions to the students, then I can understand that how far my lecture has, has been understood by the students. Some students who are attentive may understand more than the others who are not attentive but I will come to that problem in some other lecture. But the important point is that that unless the response comes from the receiver that means to whom the communication is addressed the one cannot know how far the communication is successful in or not. Because if it were in the classroom I would have asked you questions by one by one. So then or you can ask me questions as the receiver. Sir I could not understand the, the, this particular point would you please explain but now it is not possible so unless the response comes that means how far I will not be able to know that how far my lecture uh, will meet your needs because you are absent I am using certain technical device to communicate to you but later on when I will get a chance to meet you personally either in the classroom or outside the classroom in the department then only I will understand that how far my lecture 
on business communication particularly on the basic elements in of the communication process have been understood or not so much for today i'll plan in the future to deliver some other lectures on this particular topic uh, business communication so that you can prepare yourself well for the coming examination thank you all